Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's time for us to recap House of the Dragon episode 3, The Burning Moon. Episode 3 opens with a conflict between the Blackwoods and the Brackens. The Blackwoods catch the Brackens moving some boundary stones and this escalates into the Battle of the Burning Mill. Next we see Rhaenyra and her people burying the Cargyle? Cargyle twins? I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, Rhaenys counsels Rhaenyra, explaining she doesn't believe the High Towers had a hand in this. She can tell this was the work of young hotheads on a revenge-seeking path, and that soon they'll forget what they were even fighting about. She tries to convince Rhaenyra to speak to Alicent, but Rhaenyra definitely ain't ready to hear that. Sir Kristen attends his first meeting as the Hand, where they discuss the Brackens and Blackwood battle. These two houses have feuded for centuries and the fact that they've sided differently when it comes to Rhaenyra and Aegon can't really be seen as the reason for them attacking each other. They do it regardless. But these two houses happen to have the largest armies in the Riverlands, so Aegon wants to declare this an act of war. But his council goes back and forth with him about his stance. They want to send word to Lord Tully as the Blackwoods and Brackens are his vassals. I learned about vassals while watching Shogun. Look at me learning shit. Kristen just wants to dive head first into war. I think he's ready to die. And I love that for him. He convinces Aegon this is a great idea as he and Aemon decide to ride along to war, leaving Vagar to defend the castle, of course. Mysterio wants to stay and become a member of Rhaenyra's court. Rhaenyra sends Reyna to Pentos, which Reyna isn't happy about and feels she isn't needed because she doesn't have a dragon. In the next scene, we see Daemon flying into Heron Hall, which is traumatic considering the last time they saw a dragon it ruined the castle and it's still destroyed all these years later. No one can live there because there aren't enough resources nearby and it's haunted. Do they know this? I'm confused. There are people there but the castle is so damn big that most of it looks deserted. Like I said, there aren't enough resources around to man the castle efficiently. Damon finds Sir Simon Strong who is like the governor or constable of Harrenhal. He pledges his allegiance to Rhaenyra and invites Damon to join them for dinner, but Damon won't eat, thinking they're trying to poison him with Laris being the new lord and all, with the death of his father and brother. But Simon informs Damon that they don't claim Laris, and they blame Laris for their deaths. Both sides, blacks and greens, know that they need to control the Riverlands in order to win this thing. Part of that means bringing the Blackwoods and the Brackens onto their side, but again, they hate each other. So Simon points Damon towards Tully. In the next scene, we're introduced to Sir Gwen Hightower, Allison's brother, who immediately wins me over by throwing shade at Kristen with him being the new hand over his deck. Glad to know he doesn't have a friend in Sir Gwen. Maybe he'll set him up or something. Nervous over not hearing from Damon, Rhaenyra's council wants to start sending dragons to either turn and burn green strongholds, which is a terrible idea. It's basically like if two nations with nuclear weapons decided to launch them at each other. Y'all both lose unless a miracle happens. And in this case, it would probably be a miracle for the greens since they have the bigger dragons. The council suggests Rhaenyra go into hiding while they conduct the war which is treason. I cannot stand Rhaenyra's council. Like, they suck real bad. Aegon has a way better council. He just don't be listening to them. Grand Maester Orwile is a gem and presents the best option to Aegon, which is to unite the Riverlands, but he's brushed off. 
Damon has the same idea though and is in the process of acting on it, so let's hope it works out on the Black's behalf. Tully holds the key, being lord of the two warring factions, but apparently he isn't of the right mind or condition, but like Damon said, they should obey their lord regardless. But we know vassals can and will turn on their liege lord, so we'll just have to see what happens. Damn, I went on a tangent. Back to the scene with Rhaenyra's council. At this point, she has walked away, and Rhaenys warns the council that Rhaenyra wears the crown of King Jaehaerys, who reigns longer than any other Targaryen. Probably because he didn't act on impulse and took time to strategize the way Rhaenyra is trying to. Next, we see Rhaenys take her man some food. Are they the only couple that like each other? I mean, he cheats, but Rhaenys at least seems to love her hubby, bringing him warm bread and broths. How sweet. She was attempting to get Corliss to name Reyna his new heir to Driftmark. I'm not sure why. Is it because Joffrey isn't Lainor's son or something else? I don't know, but Corliss ain't trying to hear that. I would have snatched my bread back. Everyone at Dragonstone gathers to see Reyna off with the kids. They also give her a few dragon eggs to take with her. I'm guessing those are the eggs that end up with Daenerys at some point. I don't know. It looked like the same tank. Can dragon eggs last hundreds of years? Next, we see Helena with Alicent. She tells her she's sad for Jaehaerys, but feels guilty for mourning. When commoners probably lose their children at a higher rate than highborn ladies. She then tells her mother that she forgives her. It's implied that she was referring to that night. Aegon is getting dressed up to ride off to war before Lord Laris walks in doing his little wordplay tricks, getting in Aegon's head about rumors he's definitely out here spreading himself. He basically scares him into thinking his council has set him up to die at war, leaving his mother and brother to rule in his absence. Aegon already knows Aemon is seen as better than him. He actually has a reputation as a fighter and he has the bigger dragon, so it's easy for Larys to play on that insecurity. So Aegon decides he isn't going anywhere. In the next scene, we meet Ulf, who claims to be the bastard of Balin Targaryen, which is Rhaenyra's granddaddy. He claims Rhaenyra is the true heir to the throne, that is, until Aegon walks in. Aegon takes his men to a brothel where he finds his brother laid up with that same sex worker from before. He attempts to humiliate him for being faithful to his working bro. This is actually very common. The folks who utilize sex workers tend to choose the same one. You don't just trust anyone with your life, but you trust any and everybody with your sex organs. Anyway, to avoid humiliation, Aegon walks out stating any whore is as good as the next, which is a whole lie. His heart was breaking as he was walking away. I know it was. That's his lover and his mommy all wrapped up in one. In the next scene, we see Sir Cole trying to get Sir Gwen to camp, but he wants to find a tavern nearby. While going back and forth, Sir Kristen spots Moondancer and Bela starts chasing them, even though she's just supposed to be keeping watch. They manage to reach the forest before she can light them up, and unfortunately, Sir Gwen seems to feel indebted to Sir Kristen Cole now, dashing my hopes of him doing something foul to him. Next, we see Bela giving her intel to the council where she admits she got hella close in order to say for sure how many men she saw. Rhaenyra gives her a look, but that's Damon's daughter. So she's probably a little crazy like him. And she's named after Balin the Brave, who was known to be either brave or crazy. So she got all that going on in them genetics. Brenna's council wants to, again, attempt to urge her into letting her dragons loose, but she remains level-headed and tells them she will consider their opinions. Rainey seems super proud in that moment, while everyone else seems agitated. Back at Heron Hall, Damon is being tortured by that haunted ass place. He has a vision of young Rhaenyra sewing up Jaehaerys' throat. And then he sees a woman who was in the hall with Simon when he first arrived and she warns him. You will die in this place. 
How nice. Rhaenyra goes to Myceria to ask what she knows about Alicent's movements. She wants to speak to her, but Myceria says killing her would be easier. I agree. Rhaenyra sets off to King's Landing dressed as a nun in order to speak with Alicent once she's alone and praying. The look on Alicent's face when she sees Rhaenyra Olivia Cook is a goddamn actress, okay? I was startled. The two of them go back and forth over Allison's claim that Viserys changed his mind, but Rainier doesn't believe her until she swears on her mother and reminds her that she said in the past that Rainier would make a great queen. This makes Rhaenyra at least believe that Allison believes she's telling the truth. So she asks her what her daddy said specifically, which leads to her finding out what we've all known, that he was just retelling the song of Ice and Fire. Rhaenyra explains to Allison that she's made a mistake, and Allison definitely knows that, but she claims it's too late and storms off, bringing episode three to a close. Allison! Could have had her killed at the end there, settling this battle for the Greeks, but I guess that wouldn't make for a very entertaining tale, would it? I think the scene between the two of them was my favorite this episode. It was intense, but kind of adorable. <laughs> Especially in the beginning when Rhaenyra pulled the knife on Allison, and Allison was like, okay, and then what? <laughs> Silencing Rhaenyra, who admits that she started wrongly. It reminded me of when they were younger and best friends, you know? Under different circumstances, they'd be laughing about this moment. And man, if Rhaenyra had Aegon's small council, Aegon would be shredded. She definitely needs Orwell on her side. They think more alike. Rhaenyra doesn't want to beat people into submission. And that's obviously why Viserya saw her as a better fit to rule. But that damn Allison. Allison didn't understand what she was hearing. And I think maybe she genuinely believed her husband had changed his mind in the final moments. But whatever, I still hate her. And she has a slappable face. So there's that. I am concerned about what will happen to if Rhaenyra gets her thrown back though. Bela showed a different side of herself this episode. I'm excited to see more of her. Who are you all excited to see more of or get introduced to? I'm guessing we'll see Alicent's youngest son soon. And who's gonna get to Lord Tully first? Leave your guesses and answers in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Don't you feel that gun, 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 gun,